Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a special meeting of Arts, Parks, and Los Angeles River Committee. I am joined by my colleague, Bob Blumenfield. I welcome everyone to the John Ferraro Council Chambers. Uh, and uh, we have one agenda item. And with that, uh, Mr. Sutton Willis, would you please read the item? Good morning, sir. Item number one, Los Angeles Housing and Community Investment Department Human Relations Commission report and a city administrative officer to report relative to the historical importance and cultural impact of establishing Indigenous Peoples Day as a legal city holiday. Thank you very much. Uh, now, what I'd like to do is we have a, uh, our colleague Joe Buscaino here to say a few words uh, before we take additional uh, public uh, or additional comment on this one item. Now, it's a special, and that means that there are no general public comment cards. However, uh, five individuals have marked general uh, comments. Uh, but you, so I'll hear them anyway. I'm not going to not hear what someone filled out a card. Uh, I'll just, uh, we'll just file that away and we'll hear those separate, but we'll hear all the comments. Mr. Buscaino. Thank you. Um, thank you. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Blumenfield. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, you have on this item attached a, a report from the Human Relations Commission, uh, which is troubling. It's troubling to me, and it should be troubling to this city. And the reason why I say that because it does, it's not consistent with the Embrace LA initiative report um, that the city has embarked upon. In fact, the Human Relations Commission report is more of a divide LA initiative. The celebration of our diversity and variety of cultures is part of what defines us as a city and nation. This has become even more apparent in light of recent news events highlighting the need for racial and ethnic harmony. We celebrate hundreds of years of immigration to America because it's the immigrant that represents America's ideals in the purest form. The notion that anyone can come here, work hard, succeed, and achieve the American dream. As a first generation Italian American myself, I am the living proof that the American dream works. My parents are immigrants. They came here for a better life and to achieve success for the benefit of their children. Never could they have dreamed that their son would one day grow up to be a council member for the second largest city in this country. And it was us Italians who in the 1880s became the first major group to immigrate to the United States and who faced ethnic, racial, and religious discrimination in the new country. In fact, many Americans at the time felt that they were inferior or noticeably different due to their swarthy and brown skin. Sound familiar? Further, after an 1891 lynching of Italians in New Orleans, a New York Times editorial proclaimed Sicilians a pest without mitigation, and adding for good measure that our own rattlesnakes are as good citizens as they. Those who sought to create Columbus Day did so as a means to align themselves to a figure that represented American patronism, but it became much more than that. Columbus and its derived form, Columbia, stood for much more than one individual. It was a way for the new world to set itself apart from the old world, and soon the name caught on. Americans represented their nation as a woman named Columbia adopted Hail Columbia as an unofficial anthem and located their capital in the District of Columbia. 20 cities named Columbus. You have Columbus, Columbia Sportswear, Columbia Broadcasting, or CBS as it's known, Columbus Avenue, Columbia University, Columbia Pictures, and the list goes on. It's ingrained in our history, culture, and everyday way of life, and in fact, I propose that it's impossible to erase it and that we should not erase it because it's important to remember our history. 
the unedited, real account of what happened. And as the saying goes, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it, which is why I support the creation of Indigenous Peoples Day here in Los Angeles, because it's so important to teach our young people about the contributions of all cultures, but not, but not at the expense of another culture or heritage, because I believe that goes against our ideals here in this country. Those who created Columbus Day were seeking a nation that is inclusive, as a way to empower immigrants and celebrate their diversity. This day recognized the beginning of worldwide immigration to our country. And it's truly a celebration of immigrants coming here to seek a better life for themselves and for their families. Columbus, or Columbia, is no longer about a man. It is now a universal theme. That has become synonymous with the celebration of not only Italian-American heritage, but the celebration of all cultures and the acknowledgement of the sacrifices and contributions made by their parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents to this great nation. And this is what this is what Columbus Day represents and why we should not turn our backs on it now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Buscaino. With that, we will uh, have uh, public comments. And just for the record, uh, we do not have quorum. Uh, unable to join us in committee today are Curran Price, uh, David Rue, uh, and... Uh, Paul Koretz. Um, our first, I'm going to name the first three commenters, uh, Silvano Mizrahi, followed by Ann Potenza, followed by Dean, and please forgive me, but I cannot pronounce the last name. I can't, I can't spell it out. Um, anyway, uh, Silvano Mizrahi, Ann Potenza, and Dean, last name starts with a C, C-H, maybe it's Champagne? perhaps? Please step forward. Thank you. Good morning and Good. thank you very much for having me. I am a voter and I'm a citizen and I'm here to support the Indigenous Day a million percent, not even a hundred percent. It's very important. It's a cultural aspect that we need, but again it should not be done at the expense of a Columbus Day that I will just share my short experience because I've been for many years involved with the schools and uh, I've been involved with the Indian Guide, I've been involved with a lot of different groups that involve kids and the one thing, thing that always Columbus Day were able to bring to the kids is the fact that Columbus was an adventurer, was a visionary, was somebody that they can learn from. There's somebody that they can just put themselves out on the line, look beyond the horizon. And you know, Columbus basically, that's what he did. He went to an equity firm, which was the queen of Spain, and he got money to do something that nobody else believed it. it's true. Thank you, Thank sir. you. Aunt Potenza followed by Dean, I believe it's Champagne, but please correct me when you step to the microphone, and then Hector Perez Pacheco. Good morning, my name is Ann Potenza. I'm the president of Federated Italo Americans, which is an umbrella organization of over 130 Italian American organizations. And I'd like to read to you that the original Pledge of Allegiance was first recited on October 12, 1892 by 12 million American school children to commemorate the 400 year anniversary of Columbus's voyage. That was the first time our Pledge of Allegiance was ever said publicly was to commemorate this man. And the reason it was is because that year, soon after, President Benjamin Harrison declared that Columbus Day would become a holiday in America. And his words, this is the reason, quote, Columbus stood in his age as the pioneer of progress and enlightenment. The system of universal education is in our age the most prominent and salutary feature of the spirit of enlightenment and is peculi peculiarly appropriate that the schools be made by the people the center of the day's demonstration. Let the national flag float over every schoolhouse in the country and the exercises be such as shall impress upon our youth the patriotic duties of American citizenship. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dean. And again, my apologies. 
And then follow, uh, following Hector uh, Perez Pacheco will be Mike um, Camareri. Okay, for the record, my name is Dwayne D-U-A-N-E Champagne, just like the wine. Thank you. Um, many American cities already celebrate Indigenous Day instead of Columbus Day. Perhaps the day should be characterized as, this, as the historical event of the great encounter between the new world and the old world. In my own Ojibwe tradition, the indigenous world is known as Turtle Island rather than the new world. More recently, we believe that many peoples before Columbus had encounters with the Turtle Islanders. These early encounters include the Vikings, Pacific Islanders, Basque fishermen, and possibly encounters from antiquity with the Egyptians, the Chinese, Africans, and others. However, the encounter with Columbus is highlighted because it's led to the sustained, if not checkered, history leading to the present. The establishment of an indigenous day would recognize and give voice to the original peoples of Los Angeles, the Fernandino de Tavian and the Gabrielino um, nations. The people of both nations have lived in the Los Angeles area. Is that my deep down? Okay. You can uh, wrap up. You're good. Thank you, Mr. Champagne. Um, Hector Pacheco followed by Mike uh, Camareri, followed by Nicholas Villasich. Good morning. Uh, my name is Hector Perez Pacheco. I am a Quechua native from the Confederacy Tawantisuyu. They refer to our, pe our people as Incas. Also, the speaker of the group called the Harmony Keepers, and we're traditional native indigenous uh, communities that represent uh, um, our ancestors. And, um, you know, knowing our history and knowing what happened to our people, where millions of us were slaughtered, massacred. That genocide was committed upon our peoples. It's really important to state the historical facts of what have came, have came forward to our communities. And it's also important, too, that we understand the, the importance of our culture and our heritage as indigenous people of this land, which, sadly enough, many of our young people, many of the community members do not know of the indigenous people of this land and the beauty in it that, that they have contributed to society and all cultures and heritage. So I urge you to please support Indigenous Peoples Day. Thank you, Mr. Perez Pacheco. Mike Camareri, followed by Nicholas Vilicic. Good morning, and thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak today. Uh, for, my name is Mike Camareri, and 44 years ago, I migrated to this country. And I can still remember when my boat brought me to this country, passed by the Statue of Liberty. That was just a special moment in my life. Uh, that, that symbolic uh, statue represented freedom. That's what this country stands for. The next uh, symbolic thing that I was exposed to was Columbus Day. Columbus Day represents what American is about. Conquering, uh, sharing cultures, um, introducing cultures, and, uh, and that's what Columbus Day is about. It's what American is about. It's, uh, it's a, such a symbolic holiday that truly represents what we are. So I really feel that it's truly un-American to suggest or recommend to remove Columbus Day from America. It's just an American thing to do. And, and I want to wrap it up by saying there's a little bit of a Columbus in every one of us that come to this country to explore, discover, and share our culture. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to encourage all the speakers not to call anyone else un-American for their views. Uh, Nicholas Vilicic followed by Randall Murphy, followed by General Jeff. Good morning. My name is Nicholas Vilicic, representing the Knights of Columbus of California. In Southern California chapter alone, we have 8,000 members of Knights of Columbus. In the state of California, over 79,000 members of Knights of Columbus. In the United States, over 1.9 million. To us, Columbus is the one who brought our faith to the New World. The Knights of Columbus provide many services. Last year we provided 175,000, dollars in charitable goods to all peoples with over 73.5 million of service hours. To us, we are here uh, since 1882 in California, since 1902, by our chapter, our, uh, charter member of our, our state deputy of uh, Joe Scott. Thank you, sir. 
Randall Murphy, followed by General Jeff, followed by Shannon Speed. Thank you, Councilman O'Farrell. Thank you for the, to the uh, commission for hearing us today. Um, I'm puzzled by a couple of things that I've heard, that being that suddenly Columbus Day has become a, an all-immigrants day. I find that to be a new and very interesting approach, which doesn't have any historical precedent. It was founded by uh, Knights of Columbus, and I believe it uh, was uh, not seen as an all-immigrants event. At the time, it was seen as an Italian-American event, which it has been adopted by. But laying all that aside, I have heard that it is the res Columbus is responsible for the Colombian trade, et cetera, et cetera. And I've, that's no more true than Genghis Khan being responsible for the European-Asian trade of today. The time has come to look forward. Other cities and states are changing Columbus Day to Indigenous People Day because of what Columbus represents to the indigenous populations of the world, stretching from Australia to the Northwest Territory and Cape Town. It is time to move forward, not look back, recognize what the future holds, and move in that direction. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Randall Murphy. Uh, General Jeff, followed by Shannon Speed, followed by Rudy Ortega. Good morning, committee. My name is General Jeff, proud Skid Row resident and community activist. And Los Angeles prides itself on its uh, diversity, uh, its respect for culture and heritage of people from all over the world that come here. But the glaring omission is the respect for the indigenous people who resided here well before the city of Los Angeles was established. Um, in Skid Row, we have a street called Indian Alley, which does its best to preserve the culture of the Indians and, and, and indigenous people who were here before uh, uh, Los Angeles. Blacks in this country have a Black Heritage Month. Latinos also have a Heritage Month, and it is desperately needed that indigenous people also need an indigenous person's heritage month. But for now, we'll start with indigenous persons day and all the, on behalf of the people I represent, we stand in solidarity with our indigenous brothers and sisters and we demand that this move forward. Thank you. Thank you, General Jeff. Shannon Speed, followed by Rudy Ortega, followed by Nancy Marie Midlow. Chokma, good morning. Um, I came to speak in support of the establishment of Indigenous Peoples Day for many of the reasons that have already been spoken. I'd like to shift my point a little bit in response to some of the comments that have been made because I have a point that I think is a little bit different regarding Columbus Day. Um, it doesn't seem that there's a lot of disagreement that Indigenous Peoples Day should be established. There's a question about Columbus Day. Without debating the historical points of whether or not he was a good or a bad guy or a man of his age or a brave explorer, um, setting those aside for the moment, the point I want to make is that for the first peoples of this city, for the indigenous peoples from many tribes who live in this city, Columbus Day represents the genocide of our peoples. And every time that day is celebrated, we feel pain. It is an additional harm to us. Thank you. Thank you. Rudy Ortega, followed by Nancy Marie Mitlow, followed by Joseph Quintana. Good morning, uh, committee. Uh, it is a privilege to be speaking in front of you to talk about Indigenous Day and the importance of it. The tragedy that had occurred, not only worldwide or even here in Americas, is the importance to understand that here in Los Angeles, my tribe is still in the shadows, invisible. There's only 800 of us. And many people don't even know the name of my tribe or correctly pronounce it. We as Fernandino, Tatavia, and Banna Mission Indians from San Fernando Mission, from the San Fernando Valley, all of Western Los Angeles up to Northern Los Angeles County, are middle down to just a few people in hand. Instead, yet we still fight for identity. We still fight for ourself, our sovereignty, and our acknowledgement itself. Our tribe is non federally recognized and still struggles to be identified. And that's the hurdles of the effects that occur from Columbus coming over, for people writing laws to exterminate Indian people. So it's important that we identify the indigenous communities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ortega. Nancy Marie Mitlow, followed by Joseph Quintana. Good morning. My name is Nancy Marie Mitlow, 
I am an associate professor of art history at Occidental College, also chair of American Indian Studies at the Autry Museum of the American West. I'm a member of the Fort Sill, Chiricahua, Warm Springs Apache Tribe of Oklahoma and New Mexico. It is my pleasure today to speak on behalf of W. Richard West, Jr., President and CEO of the Autry Museum. Rick West is a citizen of the Cheyenne and Arapaho Nation, as well as the founding director of the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian. Citing UCLA professor Ben Madley's recent book, An American Genocide, West states, quote, the history of our beloved state of California is highly compromised, indeed profoundly flawed by what was done to its first citizens by those who came. While it can never fully recomp um, recompense for the tens of thousands of lives taken, the initiative to establish an Indigenous Peoples Day is nevertheless an important step down a redemptive path that could lead ultimately to a profound cultural reconciliation. Let us join hands and not let a historic opportunity pass us by. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Michael. Joseph Cantania will be followed by John R. Pulsuwa, I believe, followed by Freddie Romero. Good morning, everyone. My name is Joseph Quintana. I'm from Kiwa Pueblo. I'm also the development director at United American Indian Involvement, which got its start over 42 years ago in the streets of Skid Row. Over the years, we've grown uh, to be one of the largest one stops for American Indians here in the city. Um, we serve everyone from seniors and elders all the way to little young youth. Um, some of the youth you see here today, I'm sure some of you have kids of your own. And we want to give them the best chance to be successful, and that means including um, understanding what that history means. Understanding what Columbus means to his Indians people is death. Death of culture, death of language, death of community. Um, and what does that mean for our future generations? Does that mean loss of hope? Does that mean that they can ascend to a position similar to yours of leadership? So we appreciate this opportunity to dialogue today. And we hope that you do support this action as it continues to go forward, not to be disrespectful of the Italian community, because we want to be inclusive of all immigrants who are here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Quintana. Joseph R., and you can correct me on your last name, sir. My apologies. Followed by Freddie Romero. It's John R. Pulse Camp. Six generations of my family have lived in Los Angeles, and several of them have worked for the city of Los Angeles, including my great-grandfather, who was a policeman back in the 1800s. Um, I'm concerned, and I would like very much for this special day to be established, and I would like to see Columbus Day removed. The problem is that Native children have had their noses rubbed in this false mythology for generations, and the things that have gone on, what Columbus stands for, is unbearable for many people. In Ireland, Mr. O'Farrell, they do not celebrate a special day for Cromwell. In Italy, I don't think they have a special day for Mussolini, even though it's said that he got the uh, trains to run on time. Columbus, no doubt, is a historical person, very important, but he's... You can finish your removed, sentence. Yes, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The reason it should be replaced by, uh, by uh, Indigenous Peoples Day is because of the fact that it has been rubbed in the faces of Native children for so long. Thank you, Mr. Polson. Uh, Freddie Romero will be followed by uh, um, I can't read the first name. My apologies. W Wasala is the last name, though. Aku, aku, Chairman, fellow members, Matuka, Freddie Romero, Kashtuote. I'm a Chumash Somali descendant, a member of the Seninez Band of Chumash Indians, but I'm here today representing myself. I heard Mr. Viscano's remarks in regards to Italian and, and uh, Christopher Columbus. Although I understand, you know, his meanings, but I don't quite get the whole reasoning behind it. The name Columbus represents more than I think what he understands. Um, I believe that the Italians that have come to this country have made great contributions to this country, but Columbus is not one of them. The name itself, Columbus, when I hear it, there's a stigma that goes along with it. 
And I think about my fellow relatives, the Tano people, who all suffered behind the works that this man has brought and the death and the, and the divisiveness at his hands. And I think about those things. And here's a, here's a day, or here's a man in which we celebrate in this country, a man who has never even been to this land, has never stepped foot on this land, but yet we celebrate his day. Thank but you, yet you have indigenous people here that have been here all this time and they have no respect. I hear my brother Rudy talk about being non, non recognized. I'm from a recognized tribe. I understand the battles he wages, that he goes through, because I stand with him. But I ask you today that you would take into consideration and you would support the changing of this name, of this day, the Indigenous State People's Day. Thank you, Mr. Thank Romero. You. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you for sharing your Chumash language, one of the uh, original tribes indigenous to Los Angeles County. Thank you so much. Uh, next we have, I believe it's Buzz, maybe? Buzz uh, Wasalia? Is, did I get that right, sir? Okay, thank you. We'll be followed by Chrissy Castro. Uh, we'll be followed by Nancy Whitehorse. And I'd like to thank the Gabinino people for whose land we stand on. <clears throat> Hello and good day, Shamanese. I'm translating to English. I am Shawnee. I am Buzz Wassler of the Water People, an accountant for New Regency Productions, Productions, the producers of The Revenant. Listen to me, brother, and let the creator and work of the good spirit follow. <coughs> Just a second. Okay. Let's add... 15 seconds to his time so he can finish his remarks. Uh, this sage was picked from the high plains of North Dakota where our brothers and sisters are fighting a standing rock. I do not smudge here because I respect your laws. And in honor of you not smoking, I also take this tobacco and sprinkle it. The sacred tobacco I sprinkle is from the hereditary carrier of the sacred bundles and is to honor your decision today to sense the goodness of the great spirit and to help you make a decision honoring our indigenous cultures, history, and all First Nations people. Probably the problem we have at Standing Rock is due <coughs> to the na naivete and ignorance of non-indigenous people. Thank you, Mr. Masala. If, if, if it was all, I'm sorry. If we go on, then I have to give everyone another minute. So thank you, thank you so much for coming and, and for your time. Um, we have Chrissy Castro, who will be followed by Nancy Whitehorse, followed by a Bridget Polskamp. Good morning, uh, Councilman O'Farrell. I'm Chrissy Castro. I'm Navajo. I'm the vice chairperson of the LA City County Indian Commission. Um, I'm here to ask on behalf of the commission that the city council replace indigenous, uh, Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, I have to say that it's very troubling to me when I hear that, uh, you know, uh, commentary that Columbus represents dreamers and adventurers and what America has been about. The historical record, including Columbus's and his crew's own writings, their own writings, have well established that Columbus was a murderer. He was a, a, a slave trader, he was a rapist, he was a sex trafficker. There's no doubt, there's no question about that. And none of the comments in support of Columbus Day speak to that truth. Um, we need justice in this country, we need race equity in this country, and we are only gonna get there by telling the truth. And the truth is Columbus is not a hero that's worthy of celebration for our children or for the city of LA. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Castro. Nancy Whitehorse, followed by Bridget. My name is Nancy Whitehorse. I'm originally from Cherry Creek, South Dakota. I'm a full blood Lakota Sioux. Growing up in South Dakota, we never celebrated Columbus Day. Um, I'm not sure. We've, they've already changed it to Native American Day. And I'm surprised that California hasn't already. So I, I'm very in, in support of replacing Columbus Day with Native American or Indigenous Peoples Day. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Whitehorse. Bridget Polskamp, followed by Marcos Aguilar. 
Yate. Uh, I'm here today in support of Indigenous Peoples Day, and I also am in support of abolishing Columbus Day. I ask myself, what does it mean to continue to celebrate Columbus Day? What it means to me and the American Indian community, including our children, it means the continued terrorization that was brought forth during that time. It comes to today. And you ask why, is because this is celebrated in our schools. As a parent, my child in kindergarten was subjected to the celebration of Columbus Day in his school with his teacher, his classmates. He returned home to tell me that he was not American Indian. The next day, he went to school. He was full of shame and hurt. He went under the desk and cut his hair off. This is why I am in support of abolishing Columbus Day. I pray for my grandchild that's just born a couple months ago that she will not have to go into the classrooms in this city or anywhere in this country and have to be subjected to that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Polskamp. Marcos Aguilar will be followed by Leila Solis. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'd like to call your attention to ending the practice of celebrating Columbus Day as a, as a leader of genocide. Instead, uh, this local government should recognize Indigenous Peoples Day on October 12th. I'm the executive director of uh, Antlaicancia, the only Indigenous Peoples community-based autonomous school in the county of Los Angeles, California, Nahuacalmecac International University Preparatory. Our school is located in Nikanchaneje, Gabrielino Tongva territory, now known in that part of Los Angeles as formerly as Otsugna. The urban context survived by transnational communities of indigenous peoples is one also survived by youth and children under such duress that local educational authorities have declared the state of life of mostly all inner city youth as one akin to post-traumatic stress disorder. Columbus Day is one of the elements that adds to that, that reality of life. I'll let the students that are behind me speak for themselves, but I'd like to also note and call your attention to the fact that the legislature of the state of California adopted joint, Assembly Joint Resolution 42 calling for increased awareness, sensitivity, and respect for issues of sovereignty related to the heritage of Native Americans and indigenous peoples and its adoption of the principles of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, as well as noting that the doctrine of discovery emanating from the European colonization after 1492 of the continents, later to be known as the Americas, has had profound and lasting negative effects on the cultures and populations of indigenous peoples. Changing Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day will provide some redress to that. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Mr. Aguilar. We will have Leila Solis, followed by Nora Perez, followed by Ansel Rodriguez. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good I'm morning. Ome Heka, and I'm an indigenous youth from Tlaltenango, Zacatecas. I'm here, not to, I'm here to urge that Columbus Day should not be celebrated. Instead, I'm here to urge you to make Columbus Day Indigenous Peoples Day. As an indigenous youth, it is my duty to ensure that my culture is passed down for generations to come. I want to make sure that my younger brother knows, that, knows his history and understands that he is not the descendant of a man who invaded, who invaded our continent. I ask that on behalf of the many indigenous communities living in Los Angeles, that you recognize Indigenous Peoples Day once and for all. Thank you. Thank you. Nora Perez, followed by Ansel Rodriguez. Uh, good morning. Good I morning. am Nora Perez. I am Zapotec from the region of Oaxaca, Mexico, and I am here representing on behalf of my school in Oaxaca. I believe that as a young indigenous Zapoteca living in Los Angeles, it is time we stop glorifying such an awful event in history that contains so much violence to attain the discovery of a quote unquote new world and start to recognize and celebrate the lives of the indigenous peoples of these lands who were mistreated and continue to be. Therefore, I encourage you to set in place Indigenous Peoples Day to recognize all the lives that were originally here and that continue to be here taking care of these lands. Thank you. Thank you. Ansel Rodriguez, followed by Stephanie Chas Perez, followed by Eric Sanchez. Uh, thank you, Chairman and members of the committee. Um, I am Kistoka Squatli, and I am a Mexica with my indigenous ties coming from Jalisco, Guadalajara, Mexico. According to the historians such as Howard Zinn, Christopher Columbus expeditions initiated the oppression, murder, rape, and trauma that has affected my family and nations for 524 years, not just here in Los Angeles, but all over the Americas. 
the removal of Christopher Columbus Day and establishment of Indigenous Peoples Day in a community like Los Angeles with around half a million indigenous youth would be a step towards reconciliation with us, the indigenous peoples of this land. That is why we need to abolish a day that represents the atrocities that happen to our people and move forward with a day that embraces our people and encourages our youth to look for, towards our future with hope. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll have Stephanie Chas Perez, followed by Eric Sanchez, followed by Victoria uh, Jamil. Now, uh, public comment is now closed uh, because it is right at around 12 noon, so th these will be the last public comment cards. Uh, the last speaker will be James uh, Charlesworth. Stephanie Chas Perez. Good morning. I'm Stephanie Chas Perez. My parents are from Totonicapan, Guatemala. I am, I am an indigenous student at Anahuacameca. I'm here representing approximately 20,000 Mayans that currently live in the country, county of Los Angeles. My people still speak 22 languages and contri contribute to the history and economy of Los Angeles. I urge that you do the right thing by recognizing the indigenous people instead of Christopher Columbus. Thank you. Thank you. Eric Sanchez, followed by Victoria Gemmel, followed by James Charlesworth. Yeah, the my name is Eric Sanchez. I am Navajo and Tejano. It is a privilege to be here representing the American Indian Community Council, a nonprofit organization based here in Los Angeles, to fully support the implementation of Indigenous Peoples Day and to replace Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, we believe that having Indigenous Peoples Day will bring together the community rather than celebrate a divisive day. We also believe that celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day will actually help to tell narratives and stories that have long been silenced and marginalized. Our communities have been at the very foundation and heart of Los Angeles. The largest American Indian community, indigenous community in the country is based here in Los Angeles County. Let's celebrate and, and tell these stories and ensure that our children are brought up knowing that they can be proud of their achievements and that they can be anything they, they want to be. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Victoria Gemmel. Uh, followed by James Charlesworth. Feel free to correct me on the pronunciation of your last name. You're perfect. Thank you. Um, thank you for having us today. Um, I'm Victoria Gimmel Pitt River, Wintu and Yana and Athabascan Nations. Um, I just want to acknowledge the original tribal nations from this area. Um, today I brought my children here because it is imperative you see who the decisions that you make affect. These systematic racial structures need to be dismantled by not erecting statues, naming buildings, celebrating holidays of individuals with horrible pasts. This contributes to the erasure of our people, history, and our own contributors. How do you think the effects of the psyche of the children get from this type of uplifting? We need to uplift humanity fighters and those with integrity. I suggest that if anyone wants to celebrate them, they could celebrate them in Spain or Italy. <laughs> I am asking that um, you consider reviewing the U.S. adopted U.N. Declaration of Indig the Rights of Indigenous People. I'm not really sure what your mission and vision statement is, but maybe it can be more inclusive of the native peoples here. Um, you guys are the leaders. We look to you to be the compass of our city. Um, LA has one of the largest native populations and the general populations in this country are also looking to you for lead. And okay. for the thank, thank you so much. I just like you you want to wrap up? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I just want to re um, request that we replace Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, James Charlesworth. Yes. I'm James Charlesworth. I'm also for the feel that Columbus Day needs to be removed. I am a, I'm a pilgrim. I'm, my family's been here since before the Revolutionary War. And you can trace my family because it wasn't wiped out. Columbus was not an American immigrant. He only brought pain to the people that were here. If we're going to celebrate an immigrant, we should celebrate someone that was an American immigrant. So if we're going to celebrate an Italian, we should celebrate an Italian who brought good to the world. He may not even be Italian, so we don't even know that. Anyway, we should abolish Columbus Day, and I'm a, my family's been here for a long time, and uh, unfortunately, 
probably unrelated to the people that brought pain. But we need to change it, and we need to change it now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. That, uh, that completes public comment on the item. And now we will uh, invite uh, the panel to the table uh, for the report. Uh, and that includes Francisco Ortega from the Human Relations Commission, uh, Rudy Ortega from the Tataviam, Chrissy, Commissioner Chrissy Castro of the LA City County uh, Indian Heritage Commission, and Paula Deas from the CAO's office. And I'd like to start with you, Francisco Ortega, uh, to present your findings. And um, everyone can join in accordingly. Uh, Thank you. Um, <clears throat> good morning, Councilmember Farrell, Councilmember Blumenfield. Uh, it's our pleasure to be here this morning to address this issue. I know that uh, we've heard a lot of public comment this morning. But before we go ahead with uh, what we have here, our presentation, and, and really reviewing and looking at the report, I'd like to uh, have your attention to the screen above. There's a video that we're about to, to play just to give you context for this conversation. Farrell, Thank you. Member Bloomfield. The Human Relations Commission was um, instructed by Council to explore the viability of establishing an Indigenous Peoples Day holiday um, that apart, set apart on its own to celebrate the tremendous cultural, uh, the tremendous social, artistic um, uh, legacy that was here prior to the establishment of the city of Los Angeles in 1782, 1781. We wanted to uh, create a process by which we, we could begin to articulate, uh, look at research, look at uh, 
national trends, look at what was happening not only locally, but what was happening across the country and other parts of the world. And so um, in um, March, uh, uh, in March of this year, uh, I think we took up this issue in this committee. And then in June 30th of this year, uh, there was formal action taken so that we could issue this report and present it to you here today. So that has been sort of the timeline. Uh, what we did in the interim and in in that time was to really begin to uh, uh, assess, uh, get together with our partners. Uh, there was a survey that we, uh, we developed. There was convenings of meetings that we held. There were interviews that we conducted, uh, uh, individual uh, meetings that we held with both um, Native American stakeholders folks that uh, care deeply about bringing attention to this issue. Um, our research uh, ultimately led us to, um, be, because we were working closely with our academic partners as well, UCLA was pivotal in this process, informing us. As you know, we, weren't, we didn't come into this process being experts and we didn't, we didn't know. We just wanted to convene a process and create a process. Now that process, maybe we're also learning still how that process works and how that pro process is inclusive. Uh, is um, legitimate uh, and, and so we reached out to a lot of people who knew best, who knew better than we did. Um, again, I just go back to being instructed by city council to create um, or at least to begin to explore the viability of creating that Indigenous Peoples Day celebration. Once we looked at that, uh, of course there were other entities in the city that were also called to, to address that issue, CAOs here. Um, to, to look at a fiscal uh, component of that. All we were concerned with is really understanding sort of the public's um, response, the, uh, the public's um, uh, input. And so in that process, not only did we have the meetings, but we held um, a dialogue uh, attended by about uh, 70 people, uh, both uh, Native American stakeholders and Italian American stakeholders at which time we tried to uh, really put on the table exactly what the challenges and concerns were uh, that were brought up. Um, and so, um, you know, we heard clearly uh, articulated um, a lot of uh, issues arose from that dialogue that we held. Um, I think we held this meeting back, uh, if I'm not mistaken, on July the 27th uh, of 2016, uh, where we held it here in, in the East. Um, uh, East City Hall East. Um, uh, in that meeting, uh, we have notes that we haven't attached to the report, but we can give those report. Um, we can also add an attachment to the report. But we have notes from that meeting that articulate exactly uh, sort of the concerns from Native Americans that had been articulated in public comment today. And so uh, also uh, the same concerns, if you look at our report, the same concerns that were also identified by folks uh, in the uh, uh, in the Italian American community, who um, have articulated their concerns in terms of abolishing uh, Columbus Day. Now, all of this, I want to really make a clear here. Um, when we were asked to explore this, we naturally, when the, the trends, the national trends, begin to inform our process. And as we saw, uh, we looked at other parts of the city, and oh, we started to see some serious trends in terms of um, who, what other municipalities had, had adopted um, or had uh, moved to not only adopt or really promote Indigenous Peoples Day, but then uh, replace, it, replace Columbus Day completely. And pre-2015, uh, we're looking at um, South Dakota, Seattle, Washington, Minneapolis, Berkeley in 1990, um, I think 1992, I apologize. Um, uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. We're looking at, in, in 2015, we're looking at uh, Indigenous Peoples Day adopted in Alaska. Um, uh, 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 Sandoval County in New Mexico. Bexar County in Texas. Uh, Lawrence, Kansas. Portland, Oregon. Uh, Corvallis, uh, Oregon. St. Paul, Minneapolis. I mean, the list uh, goes on of uh, municipalities. And in 2016, we're starting to look at other municipalities that have begun to address the same um, issue. Uh, Vermont um, established an Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona. 
Denver, Colorado, Indigenous Peoples Day, Boulder, Colorado, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Spokane, Washington, Eugene, Oregon, Cambridge, Massachusetts. So um, Yakima, Washington, also Durango, Colorado, and Santa Fe, New Mexico, all municipalities that have um, now moved to um, not only uh, uh, celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day, but uh, replace it directly uh, with um, uh, Columbus Day. Uh, we, we also um, uh, set, set forth a small survey that we, where we wanted to post it in, in several of our um, social media outlets and Facebook for our Facebook page and our Twitter account where we um, asked uh, five questions, five simple questions, and we got, um, we have also attached to your report, you'll see some of the responses to that, um, folks, uh, uh, where we ask questions about, um, um, do you, um, for example, should Indigenous Peoples Day replace Columbus Day? Um, in our sample of, I think we received 126 uh, responses from our survey, 58% um, uh, of the respondents uh, responded uh, affirmative to that. Uh, so um, I um, just wanted to, to, to really underscore that in the process of investigating this and, and doing this, um, the Human Relations Commission, and I understand people's passions. This is a, a deeply passionate issue. People have a uh, tremendous um, uh, stake in uh, really creating, especially the folks that we, we talk to individually from uh, uh, the Native American community who feel that th this issue has taken uh, so long and that this is the time for this to, to change. And also uh, listening to our Italian American uh, uh, concerns and saying that we're, um, or they're in a sense, they don't want to be uh, uh, marginalized uh, while another group gets um, gets uh, uh, recognition. Uh, this is not the intent of the Human Relations Commission. You know, we understand that the county uh, Human Relations Commission is also undertaking a, same, uh, a similar initiative that on, on October 5th of this year, uh, they move forward with the, uh, the Board of Supervisors. Um, we understand that LAUSD has also, and is included in our report, LAUSD celebrates a version of uh, a Columbus Day as um, Discovery Day, um, but they also have, uh, they also celebrate in, uh, uh, an International Indigenous Peoples, Peoples Day, um, or an observance of that. So we, we wanted to, to uh, n not only be inclusive, but we wanted to have all the voices be heard in this process, and we wanted to be as, um, uh, as thorough as possible. And, and so that's what we, we have. I think when you see our report, you see some of the uh, mapping that's already been done. Our UCLA uh, academic partners have, have been um, doing the bulk of that. Um, so anyway, in, in terms of the pieces uh, that we're, we were responsible for, I mean, you have Christy Castro and, and Rudy Ortega here for, from the um, uh, city, county, uh, Native American um, uh, commission. Uh, they could answer some of those questions on, uh, on that front. But uh, if you have any, anything to ask me in terms of what, what our report, how we came to the report, how it happened, there are, I, wanna, I do uh, want to apologize for a few discrepancies. Uh, I know that some of the uh, links that the report has uh, had not been functional. We are aware of that, and we want to bring those uh, uh, online. And so there was a few that if you clicked on the report and, you, and it, it didn't take you to the source that we cited it from, so I want to apologize ahead of time for that. We will fix that. Thank you. I, I think what I'd like to do is uh, um, have Rudy and Chrissy weigh in since yes. you were part of this process for the last year. Um, and uh, as commissioners and participants, um, so please. Sure. Well, thank you, uh, uh, council members. Firstly, you know, to look at the notion of Indigenous People Day was an important part, and the commission here, we're in favor of uh, replacing Columbus and, and putting in uh, Indigenous Peoples Day. And to understand the importance of American Indian peoples or Native American people in general, uh, we're always the ones that are last to be seen. We're last to become citizens of America in 1924, last to practice our religious practices in 1978, 
And as I said earlier, my tribe itself uh, is a tribe that is still fighting and pursuing identity alone. So the crises that have occurred through the atrocities that have over time, we find that it's important to tell the truth and continue to do research. And some through this research, the truth comes out and it's difficult for one group of people. But we're not pretty much not disregarding one person for another or one ethnicity for another. We're truly identifying the truth of America. And as Americans, we are. We all are. We want to tell the truth overall. We want to bring America to a greater stance than what we are today. And that's going to take some healing. It's going to take some education. And it's going to take some fact-finding. And not all is pretty in sight because we all led to believe America was one great nation solely on principle, on facts of people who discover, people who came to conquer. But the truth is there was people living here, there were societies, there were indigenous communities, families, culture, religions, and all those were set aside for the founding of another. So that's why it was important for us to identify indigenous people Day as uh, a place to acknowledge the cultures of here of America. Thank you. Chrissy, before you start, Rudy, state your full name uh, for the record and, sure. and uh, title. Sure. I'm Rudy Ortega, Jr., the tribal, I'm sorry, Rudy Ortega, chairman of the Los Angeles City County Indian Commission. Thank you. Chrissy Castro, Navajo, vice chairperson, Los Angeles City County Native American Indian Commission. Um, I just wanted to recognize all of the stakeholders in the Los Angeles uh, indigenous community that have come out this last year and have provided countless testimonies on why it's so important for us to not only establish Indigenous Peoples Day, but to repeal Columbus Day. Uh, Native American youth in this country, um, we have a suicide rate that's three times the national average. Uh, Native Americans, we're the only ones that still have race-based mascots in this country. And the American Psychological Association along with teachers unions and countless other professional organizations have recognized that that suicide rate has a lot to do with the ways that Native peoples are portrayed in this country. That includes this legacy of Columbus Day. So, you know, I understand, and we actually had some really good conversations with the Italian-American community to say, this isn't about us wanting to take anything away from Italian-Americans. This is us wanting to protect our people. We want to survive. We want our children to be healthy. We want our children to be proud of where they come from. This is what all Americans want. We just want fairness. We want our civil rights to be respected. And the fact that we have been testifying dozens and dozens of people, and that still, you know, we want understanding and still that there's, there's people that can come up and say that we're trying to take something away from them. It's hurtful. It hurt, it's hurtful. I shake, I shake in these seats sometimes when I hear some of the rhetoric about discovery and about this, this man was an adventurer, and we should all be proud of this adventurer, and we should be proud that this was the founding of our country. We have an opportunity to right a very, very severe historic wrong in this country. And I want to be proud of Los Angeles. I want to be proud of this city. And we're really asking, as a whole indigenous community, 500,000 plus people in LA County, largest indigenous community in the whole country, we want to be proud, and we want our, our city and our county municipal governments to stand up for us and to give us voice, and a voice that we haven't had for too long, the first peoples of this country. We're asking for the historic wrong to be righted. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Castro. Uh, Paula Dias, uh, CAO's office, could you please uh, weigh in? Yes, Thank Paula Dias, CAO's office, Employee Relations Division. Um, if we're going to replace uh, one holiday for another, no additional day, there's no fiscal impact to the city's budget to do that. There will, however, be administrative costs in terms of time in updating the administrative code and meeting and consulting with the unions to update the MOUs. Thank you. So, oh, of course. Uh, one thing I forgot. The main thing, the overtime cost for a single day uh, right now would be uh, approximately two million for overtime for civilians and 9.2 million in soft costs. That's just paying for non-productivity. And that's the yearly cost for the Columbus Day holiday? Yes, for so that just... single day. So if we swap, there's no additional fiscal cost. Mm -hmm. That's what we pay now. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and as I said from the very beginning, uh, I'm certainly not looking to create a new paid-off city holiday. Um, 
So let me just, let me just say a few words, a few things here. Uh, first of all, I read the entire report and all the documents that came with it. I want to acknowledge the incredibly hard work done by my staff, Star Parsamian, David Hirone, who are here, and others on my team who for an entire year have worked closely uh, with Human Relations Commission, with the uh, Native American County City Commission, and others, um, and also their colleagues uh, amongst the staff of my colleagues on the LA City Council. Uh, it's been um, a very thoughtful uh, process, uh, and it was important for me to set the tone um, so that no one would be judged harshly for their feelings or opinions. Um, and I know that when you have discussions about issues that are, you're so passionate about, uh, things are going to get said, passions are going to be released, feelings are going to be unleashed. Uh, and we have to be flexible and forgiving of uh, the way others feel about um, issues on, on all sides of this particular cause, and I will call it a cause. Um, it was very important to me. Let me back up just a second. So when I ran for the Los Angeles City Council, um, I knew I was running for the Los Angeles City Council who I am. I am of Native American and Irish heritage. I had no idea that that would, um, three years later, um, motivate me to uh, make this move. But in a sense, that's irrelevant. It doesn't matter if one is of Native American heritage or not. What matters is that you acknowledge the truth of our own history and that you, when you have an opportunity to right some wrongs that are clear in the historical record, that you move forward to do so. Uh, and so I feel very good about the approach. Now, for anyone who has made it an issue in terms of my Native American heritage, there was one letter from a, an attorney, Damien Capazola, who quotes, specifically, I understand that City Councilman Mitch O'Farrell, who claims to be part Indigenous Indian American, has stated in effect that he's offended by the idea of Columbus, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I just want to show you for the record, this is my great-great-grandfather, who was a chief of the Wyandots in Northeast Oklahoma. Uh, and he was followed by my grandfather, who was chief on two occasions. Uh, the level of Native American blood is not in dispute. I'm a member of the Wyandot Nation. You can check the records yourself. Uh, but I think for, for those to imply, even in a small way, are missing the entire point of this issue. And it also serves to marginalize someone who is putting forward something that he or she believes in. And Native Americans are used to being marginalized, are they not? Um, and that is uh, not acceptable under any circumstance. So what they're, that way of thinking, you're missing the point entirely. Now, I'd like to highlight a few things that are in this report. Uh, and one is from a uh, professor of law director, UCLA Native Nations Law and Policy Center, Angela R. Riley, who writes, indigenous peoples, including but not limited to the Tongva, Tataviam, uh, and Chumash, have been in what is now the city of Los Angeles since time immemorial, yet still are not adequately recognized as its first peoples. The movement to recognize them through the establishment of Indigenous Peoples Day offers you an opportunity to right this historic wrong. She goes on to write, Today, Native Americans, indigenous peoples suffer the worst outcomes in, on almost every socioeconomic indicator of well-being, including rates of poverty, high school completion, life expectancy, gender violence, youth suicides, as Ms. Castro mentioned, and representation in the child welfare and criminal justice systems. Native peoples are also the only group to still be treated as mascots and called derogatory names by major public figures. Something else I'd like to cite in the report is another letter uh, from uh, one of our speakers, Shannon Speed. And uh, Ms. Speed uh, talks about the first peoples, the Tongva, Tativiam, and the Chumash, uh, and elaborates, the presence of indigenous peoples in this city, whether they have historical roots here or are products of various 
processes of diaspora, uh, a diaspora is often overlooked. This erasure is not a historical accident, but rather is a product of very real and overt processes of racialization over the decades. City Council can and should establish Indigenous Peoples Day in order to arrest these processes of erasure and acknowledge the presence of a huge Indigenous population of our city. Columbus symbolizes genocide to Indigenous people. Symbolizes genocide to Indigenous peoples. Celebrating Columbus Day as an official holiday causes deep offense to us and creates a form of ongoing harm. It is a form of symbolic violence that exacerbates intergenerational historic trauma for our people. Converting Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day is an important symbolic act that does a great deal to rectify this wrong. It is not the same as creating an Indigenous Peoples Day on another date, as to do so would leave intact a holiday that symbolizes, indeed celebrates, the history of the attempt to annihilate us as peoples. Now, in my own family growing up, my mother being of Native American heritage and my father being a proud Irishman, um, I couldn't even tell you the last time we as a family celebrated Columbus Day. But we're made of pretty strong stock and moved forward and persevered and we had advantages that others don't, especially the population of Native Americans that I just illustrated who were at a sociological disadvantage across the country on every level, including right here in LA County. And it would be irresponsible of me not uh, to work as someone who has a little bit of power to illuminate this tragedy and figure out how we can right this wrong. Um, I want to say a few more things. Um, from the historical record, and you can source it all, uh, on Christopher Columbus, his first famous voyage in 1492, Columbus landed on an unknown Caribbean island after an arduous three-month journey. On his first day in the New World, he ordered six of the natives to be seized, writing in his journal that he believed they would be good servants. Throughout his years in the New World, Columbus enacted policies of forced labor in which natives were put to work for the sake of profits. Later, Columbus sent thousands of peaceful Taino Indians, and he coined the term Indian in 1492, that, were, that they were the Taino natives, uh, from the island of what is historically referred to as Hispaniola to Spain to be sold. Hispaniola is now Haiti and then the D Dominican Republic. Many died en route. Those left behind were forced to search for gold in mines and on plantations. Within 60 years after Columbus landed, only a few hundred of what may have been 250,000 Taino were left on their island. Now, that figure is disputed. Some claim it's as many as into the millions. But we know that at minimum 250,000 Taino uh, were discovered by Columbus in 1492. As governor and viceroy of the Indies, Columbus imposed iron discipline on what is now the Caribbean country of Dominican Republic, according to documents discovered by Spanish historians in 2005. In response to native unrest and revolt, Columbus ordered the brutal crackdown in which many natives were killed in an attempt to deter further rebellion. Columbus ordered their dismembered bodies to be paraded through the streets. Again, Spanish historians in 2005, uh, documents that are verified. Now we have to remember that Native Americans across this country have fought in world wars. My own grandfather, the chief, was a veteran. That's why I take offense to, be, to anyone inferring that someone is un-American for feeling passionate about writing history's wrongs. Um, Christopher Columbus, at, in all of my research and the research that was provided by HRC and way beyond, um, may not have been guilty of genocide. He, the individual, may not have been guilty of genocide. I will give you that. But he was directly responsible for setting it in motion across the Americas, and that is a fact. The most accurate portrait of Christopher Columbus is that of cruelty and slavery. Now, we can jump forward a little bit to the California missions. You saw on this interactive map that right around 200 years ago, there were very few signs of the local indigenous uh, culture and people. Because when the missions rolled through, uh, native tribes were forced to convert to Christianity 
uh, or they would be punished and even killed. Now, by the mid-18... And, that, and that's a reason why it's so hard to establish uh, a, a recognized native tribe uh, in California because the missions so completely wiped out uh, uh, Native American history in California, more so than other uh, states. California didn't have the advantage of treaties. That helped a little bit in other places in the United States. Now, all of the treaties were broken. Every Native American treaty in the history of the U.S. Was, is a broken treaty, and it numbers over 500. Now, California, at the time of uh, discovering of gold, the California governor, Pete H. Burnett, in January of 1851, is quoted as saying, a war of extermination will continue to be waged between the two races until the Indian race becomes extinct. The state of California hired hunters, headhunters. They hauled in scalps, body parts of Native Americans. It's a very, very ugly history, but it's a real history, and it's a true history. And acknowledging it does not mean that you're not as patriotic as the next American. It's simply acknowledging the truth. Now, there is definitely a false mythology put forward. We, we need to remember also that um, the, the country of Italy did not exist for 369 years after Columbus sailed to the Americas. It became a country in 1861. Um, and he was uh, of... of from Genoa, the region of Genoa, but it was not a country for 369 years. Just a fact. Um, so some of the quotes that I've heard today as well from my colleague, Joe Buscaino, whom I respect deeply, is quoted as saying, it's impossible to erase history. Impossible to erase history. Well, it's really not impossible to erase history because we've erased the history of the Native American realities uh, for decades and decades, if not hundreds of years. What I would like to do is reinstitute history. Another uh, commenter was, uh, the Knights of Columbus have been here since 1882. The Native American tribes have been here for tens of thousands of years. Um, so those are just some of the finer points that I want to bring today, Light, and I encourage everyone to read this report thoroughly. Let me say and reiterate the fact that this is bigger than any of us. It's bigger than the issue of this false mythology that has been put forward over the centuries. And I, I, am, I always pause because history and culture are so important to me and so many of us, as is the history and culture of Italy, my favorite place in Europe, my best friends. I gotta tell you, I ask not to be judged um, by those in the Italian community who feel passionate about keeping Columbus Day as, as a holiday. I don't judge you and I hope you won't judge me because this has nothing to do with uh, the history, culture of the incredible uh, Italian-American community in Los Angeles or across the country. Um, so with that, I would uh, like to inv invite my colleague, Bob Blumenfield, to say a few words. Thank you very much, Mr. O'Farrell. Uh, thank you for bringing this forward in a very thoughtful, and methodical way. Uh, I want to first and foremost appreciate that because I, you really are taking a, a difficult issue, one that is has is, is deeply personal and is emotional on many sides, and you're you know you're bringing it forward in a way to give give people voice and to try to address um, address historical wrongs, and I and I appreciate that. Um, I certainly also very much want to see um, indigenous people recognized, I want to see history um, corrected in many ways, and I, and, and I think that's extremely important. I do, you know, hearing what I've heard today and hearing, you know, a lot of folks come to my, my office about this, Columbus Day 
means different things to different people. Uh, and that's, that's a hard thing to deal with um, you know, as, a, as a council member because we don't, wanna, we don't wanna offend anybody at this point. You know, we, want, we wanna be inclusive, we wanna bring people together, and we, wanna, we want Indigenous Peoples Day to ultimately do that. As far as the report goes, I'm, I think it was a good report in many ways. Um, I'm a little concerned about the, the recommendations are just binary. You know, they're, they're, they're one recommendation, either we note and file it, or we, uh, we move forward with the, with the uh, Indigenous Peoples Day and replace it with Columbus Day. And while I'm not sure what the right thing is, I do think that there are, there are multiple options in front of us that are not just binary. And, and that also goes to the question of what other cities have done. Uh, I'd like to see a little bit, I'd like to see that parsed out a little bit more because when I, when I did a little research just Googling around trying to figure out, well, how did other cities deal with this? Um, it's very different. You know, you have Albuquerque in the column of a, a group that, that replaced Columbus Day. But when you Google it, it turns out that um, that they didn't replace it. They added Indigenous Peoples Day. So they actually have two, two things living together at once. They have Columbus Day and Indigenous Peoples Day, as, as what I can tell from, from the writing. And a number of the other cities that were mentioned, um, uh, Denver and Phoenix uh, and some others, they added Indigenous Peoples Day, but they, didn't, they never had Columbus Day. So they didn't actually have the same choice that, we ha that we're faced with today for whatever reasons, be they fiscal or historical, they never had Columbus Day. They just, as, a, as they were able to just move forward and add Indigenous Peoples Day, which is in many respects a much easier decision. If that were the case here, I think this would be a slam dunk, no problem. Um, the hard part is now we're bringing folks in conflict who, who imbue different meanings into, into Columbus Day. So I think the report is really good. I mean, I look forward to the continued discussion about it. Uh, I do think that there are multiple options, you know, whether we go the, the, the full route as uh, Mr. O'Farrell's recommending, whether we do the Albuquerque model of having folks live together, uh, you know, or they're, they're, as was suggested by some, you could have it on a different day, and of course you could note and file. So I, I count four different options that the council has in front of it. Um, but I think what's, what's, what's become clearly apparent to me in, in listening to what's going on is that we need to do a better job of reconciling history and recognizing um, indigenous people. And that's not only about what we do as a, as a council, but that's also, as was pointed out, what's being taught in our schools. You know, my daughter this week is studying, um, they're, they're having a little debate and each kid was assigned a different, you know, whether it was Columbus who, you know, quote, discovered America was one of the things that they're assigned or Leif Erikson is who my daughter was assigned or uh, Native Americans and other kids are assigned and they're doing a, a discussion about that, which is actually it's instructive to have the kids debate it. But I think we need, we need to do a better job of addressing the wrongs and dealing with the history that is, it, that is our collective history. Um, and as I said, I, I look forward to the discussion as we, as we move this forward. Uh, I know that you're going to move it forward into to council, and I think it's incredibly important. And I want to thank thank you for bringing it forward, and, and really thank all the people who've come uh, and testified so passionately uh, about the issue, because I think it is it is very important. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blumenfield. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, since we don't have the benefit of having a full committee, because three members are not here for the reasons they're giving. Uh, we cannot uh, take a vote, but what I can do is move this to council without recommendation so it becomes uh, a matter of the full city council. Uh, and uh, that is what I, I will do. Um, it is my hope that um, more and more people acknowledge uh, the truth of the matter, the actual history of what has taken place. Uh, it is unfortunate that there hasn't been full enlightenment uh, in the city of Los Angeles where there have, uh, other cities have moved forward with great certainty and unanimous decisions in replacing Columbus Day. Uh, it is my hope that uh, we will move in that direction in the city of Los Angeles. 
Uh, and so that being said, um, Mr. Clerk, please transmit this, uh, this item to council without recommendation. And that will be the order. Again, thank, I want to thank all of you for coming to testify uh, and sharing your feelings and your opinions. Uh, and this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you.